Hi, I'm David. Welcome to this episode of Behind the Render. Today I'm discussing the VFX for the MCD Network's Samus Charge Beam from the Metroid Prime epilogue video. This effect was specific and that the effect needed to look like the weapon from the original Metroid Prime game. I went over the plate photography and referenced in-game footage to break down the VFX assets required to complete the shots. I discussed with the MCD Network about replacing the physical cannon with a CGI prop, and they preferred working with the physical prop. Overall, I would need assets to match practical smoke, create an explosion, and create the charge beam. We also discussed a visual gag, which was ultimately cut for the final edit. The arm cannon would need a charging effect with particles sucked into the cannon charge, in addition to glowing areas of the arm cannon. The tracking data of the cannon was acquired in two places, the front of the cannon and the top. I tracked the points in X and Y with rotation so the charge effect and glowing lights stick to the cannon. To save resources and since the effects would be used in a wide shot, I made mask shapes for the cannon lights instead of modeling CG light assets. The charge beam could be broken down into colored spheres, animating energy with additional energy sucked into the sphere, with some heat distortion coming off the barrel of the cannon. The spheres were made with fractal noise animated with an expression and cropped with masks. Each sphere was built off the base element and adjusted with two spherical masks to define the shape. Inside the charge beam, I included a particle system for the energy streaks. After Effects doesn't have a particle system that allows particles to be pulled to a source location, so I had two options. I could go into a full 3D program and set up a particle system that has the control I want, or I could create the effect emitting outwards and reverse the footage. The tricky part was getting the particle emitter to animate correctly to the movement of the cannon. It would have been easier to make an extra large comp and emit the particles and then assign the footage to the motion of the cannon However, a pre-built comp moving afterwards would not have the interaction I wanted. The particles needed to have the momentum of the arm cannon affect their position. What I ended up doing was taking the keyframe data of the arm cannon and reversing the order of the keys. So when I embedded the particle system and reversed the playback of the particles, they moved with the inertia of the arm cannon movement. The heat distortion was a bit more complex. If you have after effects and money to spend, you can buy the amazing heat distortion plugin from Video Copilot. Keeping things on budget, I opted to build my own heat distortion by researching compositing methods and the general science behind heat distortion. The heat distortion was achieved by creating a clean plate of the background by painting out the actor, then creating an animated displacement map. The animated displacement map was achieved with a particle system inside of After Effects built to behave like rising heat. The particles were set up as two systems on the red channel, for the distortion map and for the distortion mat, with the mat having more mass to feather the look of the distortion against the background. Rotoscoping the actor and creating the clean plate allows the heat distortion to only distort the background elements and not the actor. In addition to the charge beam effect, I needed to help blend the footage with the physical smoke shot practically. Some of the shots did not have smoke when they should have, so for continuity, I would need to add smoke back into the shot. The charge beam would also create an explosion that had to be accounted for. Stock footage of smoke was color corrected and manipulated to match the smoke seen in the other shots. This process utilized the fundamental compositing tools used to combine and match footage. The explosion used a combination of stock footage and particle simulations. The particle simulation helped me to get larger chunks of debris in the shot that flew outwards. Whether creating an established effect or starting from scratch, the artist has to break down the desired effect into individual assets. This allows an artist to focus their time efficiently on creating each element without being overwhelmed by the final effect. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more content, give the video a like, and comment below with questions you have on the VFX discussed in this video or any content you would like to see in the future. Thank you for watching.